Hi there, if you suffer with confusion, brain fog, depression, memory loss, anxiety, fatigue, loss of balance, numbness and tingling in your hands or in your feet, heart palpitations, loss of appetite, diarrhea, constipation, or frequent bruising, you might have something known as B12 deficiency or even pernicious anemia. And while that's a long list of some very common problems plaguing many individuals today, it can serve as a very important critical warning sign that you're deficient in this critical vitamin. I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and today not only are we talking about vitamin B12 deficiency or B12 anemia, I'm also going to explain to you some of the common causes behind this B12 anemia, its connection to MTHFR mutations, and finally, some of the tests needed to really uncover the cause of your B12 deficiency. This is an important point to, to, to really uh, make note of because you can have a normal B12 blood test and still have a terrible deficiency uh, because you've relied on a test that's not very accurate until the very later stages of this deficiency. Now, like I said, uh, it's one thing to be B12 deficient, but it's a totally different and a, and a total game changer once you find out what the cause of your B12 deficiency might be. And this is going to require some investigation. So let's first start off by saying the what, why of B12. Okay, so for starters, vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin. It's a water-soluble vitamin. It's required for just about almost every reaction to take place in your body. Uh, B12, along with other B vitamins, help support your adrenal glands, which are your fight or flight, your stress glands. Uh, super important to dealing with stress and dealing with, uh, you know, chronic uh, health problems where uh, adrenal problems are, are often associated. B12 is also needed for neurotransmitter production as well as function. And it's here where B12 plays just an, a critical role in memory, focus, mood, sleep, concentration, and emotional stability. B12 does a lot of other things as well. B12 is also critical for heart health. Uh, it's here that uh, B12 can lower the damaging uh, effects caused by homocysteine levels in the blood vessels. Now, homocysteine is a, is a marker for inflammation within the brain and in the blood vessels of your heart. And in order for your body to convert damaging homocysteine into methionine, B12 is needed to make that conversion. If that wasn't enough, B12 is also needed to make red blood cells, which of course carry oxygen throughout the body, uh, and that's also needed for making DNA. So as you can see, B12 is just a critical, critical vitamin, and many people around the world have no idea that not only uh, do they have low B12 levels or subclinical low B12 levels, they really don't know what the cause of that B12 level is. And sometimes knowing the cause of that B12 deficiency is much more important than just knowing that you're deficient in it, okay? Now, it's also important to understand that when we say, that, when we say B12, it's important that you realize that B12 has many forms, okay? The most common forms are hydroxycobalamin, cyanocobalamin, and methylcobalamin, which is your methyl B12. Cyanocobalamin is a cheap laboratory man-made synthetic chemical, okay? You'll never find it in nature. Where you do find it, however, is in medications. Where you do find it is in food companies that just buy huge, com uh, huge quantities of it. And then what they do is they fortify and enrich foods so they can get away by saying that the food has B12 in it, okay? You're also going to see cyano cyanocobalamin uh, in your lower grade big box supplements. You'll find it in supplements that you buy off the internet. You'll find it in energy drinks. You know, and anytime you see B12, kind of look at the type of B12 that is uh, being found in that food, and you're going to see that often it's that cyan cyanocobalamin. Um, again, B12 shots, a lot of people have fatigue. What happens, they go in to their doctor and the doctor gives them B12 shots. They're often getting cyanocobalamin. So here's the thing, in order for our bodies to use cyan cyanocobalamin, it's gotta can get converted into methylcobalamin. And that's the version of B12 that you really wanna take if you have a B12 deficiency. One of the major problems that we're seeing today uh, with people suffering just from a, a variety of chronic health problems is this genetic mutation that you're probably hearing more and more about. It's called an MTHFR mutation. And some researchers actually estimate that upwards of 50% to 70% of the population have at least one of these mutations, okay? So what this means is that those with the mutation are less able to methylate B12. They're less able to convert cyanocobalamin into methylcobalamin. And this can create a, a lot of different problems, okay? If you can't do this, one, you, you know, you, you can't have, you can have all these symptoms that, again, we talked about in the beginning. That, that's obvious. But more importantly, one of the things that we need to discuss is what exactly causes B12 deficiency. And what it really comes down to is, is really 
probably three or four different things. Okay, number one is, is you have to eat plenty of foods that contain vitamin B12. Okay, these are going to be things like beef, lamb, poultry, shellfish, eggs, crab, lobster, and liver. Your body has to be able to absorb the B12. Okay, so it has to be able to absorb enough of that vitamin B12. And this is really dependent on special proteins called intrinsic factor. Okay, now you have to have good hydrochloric acid production. Okay, that's another important thing. Um, without proper hydrochloric acid production, you'll never absorb your B12. And this kind of plays into some autoimmune disorders where, especially people with Hashimoto's disease and celiac disease, they have antibodies that begin to attack something called intrinsic factor. This is something that we often test for in our office. So again, you know, you can't be on any kind of proton pump inhibitors, you can't be on antacids, you can't be on uh, steroids. There's a lot of different kind of medications that will block hydrochloric acid production. When you do that, you're going to be blocking B12. You also have to have proper methylation, okay? This is where that MTHFR gene will attach a methyl group to B12. I did a three or four part video series not that long ago. We talked about all the different facets of, of MTHFR, what is methylation, and really the title of that video, which I would encourage you to go back and watch, is called MTHFR, what it means in simple language. So beyond that, let me just give you a list of some of the other possible causes of B12 deficiency that you should be aware of, okay? Number one is vegan and vegetarian diets, a common myth amongst many vegetarians that I've worked with over the years and vegans is that it's possible to get your B12 from plant sources like seaweed, fermented soy, spirulina, and brewer's yeast. And unfortunately, the problem here is that many of these plant-based foods contain analogs of B12, cobamides, and these actually can block the true uptake of true B12, okay? Other causes of B12 deficiency or diseases associated with B12 deficiency include things like autoimmune disorders, lupus, Graves, MS, Hashimoto's disease, which is, again, uh, you know, an autoimmune thyroid disorder. Very, very common in hypothyroidism as well as hyperthyroidism. Um, intestinal inflammation from Crohn's disease or celiac disease can compromise the absorption of B12. Infections such as H. pylori or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, you can see it in leaky gut. You can see it with people who um, intake excessive alcohol or excessive alcohol consumption. Again, these are all issues that compromise B12 absorption. We talked earlier about low stomach acid, okay? Low stomach acid, again, from prolonged use of, of acid-reducing medications, Tums, Prevacid, Prilosec, all these things that now you can buy over the counter without a prescription, these are things that can block B12 absorption. Pernicious anemia, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but uh, pernicious anemia, um, again, this is an autoimmune disorder. This is where the immune system destroys the red blood cell and with it, the intrinsic factor within those blood cells. Parietal cell destruction. Your parietal cells produce hydrochloric acid as well as intrinsic factor. If your immune system destroys these cells, you don't produce HCL, you don't produce that hydrochloric acid, and then of course you don't produce intrinsic factor, and without intrinsic factor, you can't absorb B12. So again, this is why I say that you know identifying the cause of B12 deficiency sometimes is more important than just saying, hey, I'm B12 deficient and I'm just gonna take B12, okay? So what you'll notice here is that many of the causes that I've just went over of B12 deficiency have a lot to do with autoimmune disease. And if this is the cause of your B12 deficiency, absolutely it's important to take B12, but it's important that you realize that while taking B12 helps and it's absolutely critical, your focus really needs to be on addressing the cause of why your immune system is destroying the tissues. And this is where you'll want to work with a doctor who really understands why it's important to look at the big picture and not just stop at saying your problem is B12. So there you go. Hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's given you an appreciation for really just what a uh, B12 deficiency can cause. I, I hope you understand now that there are different kinds of B12. And, and again, while it's important to not stop at just uncovering the deficiency, it's much more important, again, understanding what the cause of it is, okay? Um, as you can probably see, many B12 deficiencies, are, again, are rooted in autoimmune disorders. And sometimes that B12 deficiency clearly might be the first sign or an early warning sign, if you will, that you're dealing with autoimmune diseases, okay? So there again, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Check out our website, uh, drhagmar.com. There's literally over a thousand pages of videos, articles, recipes, um, uh, various video series that I've done on MTHFR and so forth, and ultimately just about how to become educated about natural medicine, okay? We do work with patients around the world, so if you have questions, visit us. 
uh, on our website, drop us a line. And remember, you have to take care of this body. It's got to last you a lifetime. And it's important that you become the most important uh, health advocate for yourself. Okay? Take care.